they have a sucking type of mouth parts and they have two pairs of stylus like needle like things they are modified mandibles and you know maxillae so the mandibles are outside the mandibular stylus are outside whereas maxillary stylus are inside and maxillary stylus are doubly grooved and you can show it this i like this so this this big groove that is there when two maxillary stylus come together there is a groove which is formed a channel which goes from you know tip of the stylet to the uh, esophagus it goes you know so this is important for getting in food you know and salivary duct is important because they through which it, they can pump uh, pump out saliva and the pathogens also are delivered through the salivary duct not through the um food food can all you know okay next you can go to the next one it's not about now the life cycle of these uh, leaf hoppers uh, is uh, very simple they have egg stage nymphal stage and adult stage okay and the as i told you eggs are laid in um, uh, as I, i also mentioned to you that they are multivoltine and then univoltine and bivoltine there is only one species which are parasitic otherwise they reproduce sexually next one so these are the nymphs nymphs will be very attractive and uh, they are also equally important they can also in fact it is the nymphal stage which picks up the uh, pathogen first and then it multiplies because you know the phytoplasma is actually uh, we call it you know the relationship between the virus vector uh, sorry the vector and the phytoplasma is called as persistent circulative propagative that means the the phytoplasma circulates within the body of the insect and then it multiplies in the body and then it actually infects the salivary glands from salivary glands it is through the saliva it gets into the next host plant you know okay next now 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 onwards what i will do is i talk more about the problems involved in identification of the vectors what do we have and then also how we can narrow down to identify the vector this this part what what you are talking about and also talk something about what are the confirmed vectors in india now in the world more than 700 in fact in the bulletin there are 1000 you have mentioned that's okay so more than 700 diseases are known phytoplasma diseases are known but only about 100 uh, vectors are known that means there is a disparity it is worldwide similarly in india about 100 or more than 100 phytoplasma is known but there are only three confirmed vectors that are there this shows the lack of information that we have regarding the vector because one of the most important aspect in the management is vector management it could be a direct management it could be biological control or it could be modification of the environment so that vector finds it difficult to survive and its population gets reduced so these are the aspects you have to work on so without knowing what are the vectors of that particular disease it becomes very difficult you know to uh, develop management strategies for these diseases the most important aspect is this vector transmission and vector identification is neither the field of plant pathologist nor the field of entomologist it's interface so without very good collaboration between the entomologist plant pathologist not only these but with the molecular biologist physiologist it may be insect physiologist or even plant physiologist and and these without the good cooperation with among these we cannot solve this problem and that is the reason why we think the international collaboration is very important it's not only within the uh, within departments different departments but also in, in within india so most of the times what happens the you know the cooperation is not coming up there will be one or the other problems will be there so that should not happen so right at the beginning of development of process for example you have you are now preparing a project for you know uh, phytoplasmas right at the beginning you involve all these people right at the planning time only so that their complete involvement is there without that i think we don't progress much 
in most of the important you know, uh, uh, works which have been, for example, uh, we have these Jalalufa studios in, uh, so, you know, in US, and also uh, the Flavicin's Dory uh, problem on grapes in Europe. So here, so much of cooperation has taken place among various faculties, faculty members, and then it has been done. And also, you should involve the young young mind, because most of the times you'll have to have cultures of not only phytoplasma but also insects, and also you should have a battery of host, susceptible host, ready to be infected. So it is very important, you know, and and it's not a you know a job of Eight to nine, eight to five or nine to five, but it's a twenty-four by seven job. You should always understand this. Unless we understand this particular aspect, we won't progress in this. So it is a twenty-four by seven job. You know. It's not eight to four or nine to four or holidays, weekends. No, and this is the reason why you know most of the things you know or these research, basic research, are, are being done at the universities because the students are involved. Students who do not have much of responsibility, but they have a young mind, very curious mind, inquisitive mind, they are motivated and they are involved. So that is the kind of you know, work culture you have to put in. Then only you can solve this problem. Otherwise, it remains as it is. I told you, we are right at 1880, whatever knowledge we had, of course, slightly we have progressed in the same way we are in 2021 today, as far as sand spike is concerned. You know. I'll tell you why. In a minute. So, okay, some of the vectors that are there, I'm going to talk about. This is the green leaf, uh, rice green leaf hopper, uh, Nephrodites virusans, and is also been incriminated from this institute, very institute, as a vector of sandal spike. But a lot of questions are asked by various scientists, including me, that it may not be a vector, or it may be, I'm not sure. So this is a putative vector. But what is important, you know, it's a, a vector, a confirmed vector of a rice yellow dwarf. It's mainly because of work done in, in this city only, in our lab by Dr. Maniapa and others, so who kind of established this, you know, that's the reason I'm putting. So I'm also putting there the host plants, whether they can bred, bred around the year or not, because these are the information that we need. And so that is the thing, okay. The next one is Orosis albicinga. This is the, I think we can say, most important vector in India. Most important. It transmits, uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar, here, okay. In fact, there was a, uh, there was an inquiry from uh, Mysore University by one young lady who was working on this, and she shows that she, she is getting the astral, uh, what is that, uh, yeah, yellow uh, phytoplasma in this. So I want, just wanted to tell you about that. It's very important. This is the most important one. It, it is confirmed vector of system phylogeny, but also sometimes it also transmits the, uh, uh, you know, brinjal little leaf, you know. Maybe there's a mixture, we don't know. So that is another aspect which probably somebody asked Govind Rao or something, uh, they will be talking about uh, that aspect now. The identific identification of phytoplasma. It's very important that we should know what we're handling with. What is the organism, casual organism you are handling? It's very important. So this can, the previous one, please. So this actually involves, it can be bred on the viral, various um, hosts. And it can breed throughout the year, no problem. But this is the one two thing to be checked to begin with. Then next one is the uh, Hishimonas physitis. This is a confirmed vector of uh, a brinjal little leaf, and mainly because a lot of work has been done. And I still remember uh, Dr. K. Srinivasan's uh, work uh, when he was a MSU student with Dr. Chalaya. Uh, such a wonderful work, the uh, interaction between the host plant and the vector, what are the modifications that are taking place. That is the kind of work that we need. You know, and those who are interested in that, I would like you to go through that those papers. I, would, I think there are two or three papers they have published. They are wonderful work, work you know. Then Maestas uh, uh, Valigaris. This has been recently implemented as a vector, but I'm not sure. It's not a confirmed vector. I'm not sure of that. 
then we have this uh, maximum rhetoric hieroglyphicus. This is there in India. It is a confirmed vector of uh, sugar, you know, sugarcane white leaf in Thailand. And also, not only that, it can transmit the phytoplasma from mother to offspring. That means we call it trans ovarial transmission that takes place. But we do have this, but so far, you no know, persons who are working in sugarcane white leaf disease or uh, no, uh, phytoplasma disease have not looked at it. It's very rare. We have a few specimens in our collection. Then comes to the, the institute, this particular institute. So sandal spike. Sandal spike, the first one, the, uh, that is Olidiana uh, carcardii. This was just gone through several name changes, Jasus indicus, Cilidia indica, then uh, Calodia carcardii, now is Olidiana carcardii. So this has been suspected as a vector, but again, not confirmed, you know. Then there are also, there is a nice paper in the forest bulletin regarding the mesargus, this munia albimaculata or mesargus albimaculata. The, the entire thing is done, but at the end, the screening committee says it's not, uh, you know, it's just, it doesn't, it is only a phytotoxic effect of the uh, phytoplasma, this uh, feeding effect of this particular leaf hopper. But again, there's a problem. Then finally, this particular one, the third one, that is, um, what do we have? Reiterator bimaculators. You know, the Kerala uh, Forest Institute, that's where a lot of work has been done on this, and they claim that this is the vector. The problem with this is no one else has confirmed this. Is the problem with some of these, uh, this is, so unless that is confirmed by somebody else, it becomes a problem. And luckily, in the samples that were uh, Dr. Rasundaraj collected, there were only a few, about two or three specimens that we got. And this, this photograph is from that, you know. So still, we don't know what is the real vector of sandal spike. I would like to mention that. There is even after 140 or 150 years, we don't know what is the real vector. So this is where I think it's very important that we should con work concertedly and then at least find out what is the, what is the vector. It is something with several other diseases. Okay, next. Okay. okay, regarding how we can, so we're talking about the searching for, you know. So whenever you have a new outbreak of a disease, vector could be entirely different. So henceforth, I'll give you a fast track of uh, a few procedures of course, this need to be refined. Uh, fast track, how we can identify what is the vector. So what is important to know is you have to collect the specimens from the area where disease is there, both from disease plant as well as healthy plants. All that you have to make collection. When you, and concentrate more on the Okinirinka and concentrate more on the diseased plants, the Okinorinka, which are there on diseased plants. You can use various methods. Light traps you can use, mullet traps, sticky traps you can use, because some of them will give you live specimens, some of them may not give you live specimens. Then once you have live specimens, bring them back and sort them out into species. So this is where, again, a taxonomist or a person trained in taxonomy becomes important. You know. And then divide them into batches of five or 10 specimens, and then allow them to feed on a disease source, known disease source in the laboratory, and allow it to feed on for, you know, circulation access period for about maybe two or three days, two days actually, for 24 to 48 hours, then remove it and put on healthy plants for about uh, eight or 10 days, or even more depending on what it is to complete its latent period. And then, most important thing is, Use the artificial media for feeding. And this is where you are reducing the timing. So what is the artificial media you're using? You are using sugar solution with buffer. Use the parafilm layer, allow these five, you know, five to 10 specimens you have fed, individually different species, and all the, allow them to feed on artificial media. And then sugar, uh, sugar solution will be there on this five to 10 ml on the other side. The insect will feed on the other, one side. And after maybe two days or three days, you remove the sugar in that fed liquid and then analyze that fed liquid for the phytoplasma. And then, see, that means there are two things. One is you should have a good source of 
phytoplasma, which is identified. And you know what is that high phytoplasma? Secondly, you should have molecular technique to identify that phytoplasma. So these are very key points which have to. So these are the preliminary things that you have to learn. And you should also have a source plant. Then you should also have a healthy battery of healthy seedlings or healthy plants for inoculation. That means you have to develop these techniques. If you have tissue culture, for example, if you are you know, dealing with a forest tree, a forest plant, which are tree plants, then you should develop you know, tissue culture so that they can be utilized. Or find out if there are any other annual plants which harbor this phytoplasma, where you can do the work. So these are some very critical things which have to be done. And these, and that's how, you know, most of the, for example, if you see a study, case studies, if you make, especially in case of uh, the Flavicens dory in Europe, which is very serious, especially which threatened the entire, you know, grape wine industry in Europe. Who did all this? They had one, you know, they have, they have identified an annual plant, they have identified an alternate host, an alternate vector, where they can use. So that's how they can progress so much on that. So similar thing has to be done. Then when once you find that, okay, they may find about 100 samples you have, maybe two or three you may get positive results for phytoplasma. So, and those are the groups of insects which are the vectors, not the others. Discard the others, start working only on this small group. So this is how we can fast track the search for the organ and these vectors. I think this is what I wanted to emphasize very much. There is also another way by which you can do. If you are good enough, you can, when once you bring these specimens from a field, from the disease plant, you can again put them on, individually, you can put them on, you know, artificial diet. And then again, test that fed liquid, whether it has any phytoplasma. Because if it is a good vector, if it is a vector, real vector, it has to deliver the phytoplasma into the plant. So here it is using an artificial medium for delivering the phytoplasma. I would recommend this to be utilized so that you can reduce almost about maybe two or three years work you can reduce in what maybe one month you can complete it. You know? So when once you identify these are the vectors, of course you can also check the phytoplasma within the insect. And when once you reduce it, then you can go on routinely doing, okay, transmitting, transmission studies, what is the effect of whether the nymphs acquire it or uh, females acquire it or males acquire it or is it transferably transmitted? What is the use this uh, species A is more efficient than the species B? All those studies can be done later on. But what is important first, you find out, okay, this is the vector. I think this is where I'll stop, okay? I wanted to just mention about this. This is important and and this can be done. What, the, what is happening mostly, you know, because only either a plant pathologist or an entomologist work on this independently. Many a times I get to you know vectors for identification. Sir, I'm using these leaf hoppers for, it has been collected from the field. They will get sample, large sample, identify. I say, no, I don't have time to identify all those large samples. You are you sure that this is carrying the, you know, does it have any uh, phytoplasma? Then only I'll, start identifying it. So, so there is, this is the reason why they, all the entomologists, pathologists, microbiologists, or molecular uh, uh, no, technologists, they should come together, start writing the project right at the beginning. So they know their role, what they have to do. Even uh, you know, crop physiologists, they should come together. Then only some solution can be got, otherwise it's very difficult will be again proving in the art, even after 100 years, oh, this is what happened, you know, uh, vectors are there. We, I think this is a vector. You know, some, some say, millions of rupees have been spent on this. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm quite serious. And Dr. Krishnakumar knows about it. And still, we, we don't know what is the vector. They have been, vectors have been named, but we don't know, we are not sure whether these are the vectors. Not only in sandal spike, it is the same thing with the coconut root wilt in Kerala. The same thing with areca uh, yellow leaf in uh, Kerala and Karnataka. They say these are the vectors, but are you? No. So there are some problems are there. But what is important, the silver lining is, we have very powerful molecular tools now with, in our hand. Make use of this, make use, best use of that and then utilize it. I think that's what I wanted to convey this message, I hope. 
ओके थैंक यू